All right. Hey, Leader Games fans. You want one of those? <laughs> Always. Uh, I'm not seeing us up yet, so. Hmm. It says we're streaming. But I don't appear, we don't appear to be streaming yet. How strange. Oh, there we are. Okay, cool. Woo, all right. Hello, everyone. We're now live, Patrick. Um, okay. I'll try not to say anything bad about Cole. Yeah, please don't. Not now. <laughs> Anytime but now. Uh, all right, let's do Twitter. Time to get laggy. Hey, everybody. It's a lovely day in St. Paul. Is it lovely outside? I haven't been outside. It's super nice. I'm going to go uh, skate after work, and I cannot wait. I'm pumped. No, oh, that's exciting. Um, all, all right. right. I'm well, waiting for Cole to tweet so I can so I can be lazy and retweet. <laughs> That's the energy I bring to the office, is how do we do this easier? <laughs> While still being a perfectionist. It's actually quite horrifying to be me. One second. Uh, okay, let's put the link in the tweet. Do, do. It's snowing in Rochester, New York. Yeah, you guys are about to get sucked. Uh -uh. Yeah, it is like not, we have snow on the ground, but it's not, you know, it's not that snowy. I think the, I think, Garrick, the laziness is born out of the inability to be perfect, so there's a lot of psychic <laughs> disorganization there. It's it's a bear, but I get through life. <clears throat> we, uh, um, yeah, my shirt says Root. I'm wearing an OG Root shirt. How cool is that, Cole? Uh, I love my OG Root shirt. I can't, even though it's like kind of worn to tatters now. Uh, so I'm a little low on volume. Patrick's a little high. We'll figure it out. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm probably also. No, no, you're, you're fine. I'm, energy I'm, also. I'm doing that on my side. Uh, okay. Um, uh, let's see here. Uh, yep. Is I'm, I'm, I'm still retweeting Cole. Yeah, yeah. It's snowy. It's beautiful here. Um, although we haven't gotten much snow, I took my kids sledding this weekend and the hill that we like to go on was just a sheet of ice, which was awesome for everyone but my back, which got all bruised from oh. a lot of aggressive sledding on just a sheet of ice. Cool. And then I'm going to take this link over to my Facebook. Uh, we are what you call professionals. Someone asked a random design question. Uh, this is an old question. Someone asked why... Um, why not play the final round of root root ends at 30 points and you don't play that last round. Um, it's because turn order is an element of play and it, it was just an element of the game's asymmetry. And I, I, it seemed, I liked it better <laughs> that way. I don't know. I mean, it was just a stylistic choice. I think it's interesting to me, Cole, because, uh, I've always argued that the play order there's a set play order in vast right mm -hmm. and it's very important to the game like it is yeah it's huge and it was one of the few things that didn't change from the beginning like, like it was defined like it was very logical that that the game well it tells the story mm -hmm. mike goes in there's the guys trying to deal with the interloper there's the monster and um I, but i then i never had to like account for play balance like balance for turn order you know because i it's like you don't need to give the fourth player two X energy cubes because they are they know they're going to be the fourth player and there's a reason right. they're the fourth player. So, but in root, it's random and it's good. It's random, right? Like, it's random in a in a sense that it can be accessed from any way, and I think it's important that it's random uh, mm -hmm. because it's it, it avoided a lot of like rules and setup problems and and like like not balance problems but like how do you play with more or less people is is already it's been solved very easily or very mm -hmm. well. So, um, so that's interesting. Yeah, and I, you know, it's it's a race to the first to thirty, not a race to the most victory points, which is a different kind of tension. Because you, what what will happen is you get like, I don't want to cross the line at thirty because I know this person is going to get thirty five, and it kind of creates like I, I don't know, it's a it's it's a baggier end game that I think Root wants. I have not thought sure. about that question in a long time though. That's some OG Root Root uh, design question right there. Um. All right, so I think I think I'm going to ask Brooke to write down some questions for us, and she can ping them to us in 
totally 100 percent. yeah in marketing or something in the slack because they are coming fast uh but let's uh let's get started i wrote down a few questions and you're here at my behest cole you are um, I, I am i am i am <laughs> um. so uh cole i like to ask you every stream uh what are you playing right now <clears throat> what am i playing right now uh you know what katie and i my wife and i have been playing a lot of feast for odin which is a game that, like, we love you Ue games. We've played hundreds of games of Agricola. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of his newer stuff we had kind of been a little flat on. Um, and Feast for Odin, I had played right when it came out. Uh, and I, th I just had kind of a bad experience with it, and I didn't, you know, it didn't grab me. But mm -hmm. one of the people on staff, Josh, usually said, hey, you put that Norwegian's expansion in Feast for Odin, mm -hmm. and it really tightens things. And my mm. goodness, it's tight. It like cuts a third of the actions out of the game and it feels great. So we've, we actually, we've been playing it like every other day for a week, which is crazy. Uh, this is, this gameplay brought to you by the fact that my daughter is now sleep trained and seems to be taking stable naps. And so suddenly we can play games. I don't know how you play games. We get to seven, eight o'clock. We get the kids to bed and we're like, now we're just going to watch TV. And then mm -hmm. she goes to bed. So I haven't been playing much. Uh, I am deep diving into Warcry right now, which is a Games Workshop game, which I did not think I would ever get back to in my life. Um, Warcry is what I, I call it's Warhammer for middle-aged dads because it's <laughs> it's only ten models per warband, sure, and it's easy um, it's easier to get back into. You know, honestly, I don't even play anything right now. Active villain, I have just been painting and learning the game. Like the deep that deep dive is interesting enough to me right now that I'm I'm okay, uh, but I've played a few games as uh, the Iron Golems and as the uh, is it the Canaanite Shadow Stalkers, um, and I have a, a Spire Tyrants Warband I've been painting, um, so yeah, so I'm I'm yeah it's um, yeah <laughs> why am I not yeah. working for GW Marketing? Um, <laughs> that's true, but it it is it's just a much lighter, more accessible game, and it's also been teaching me stuff i want to learn about skirmish kind of gameplay like that because I, I think that will be important to the advanced version of path if we go that direction with path where the battles will be blown up um if the if two player wants to blow up the battles and drill into the battles a little bit and uh and you know and you know my next studio project uh, of course working on skirmish or playing other people's skirmish games mm -hmm. to me right now so yeah uh the painting is terrible i'm awful at it i i'll get i will get back to it so Cool. Yeah, so I've been playing that. Um, video game-wise, nothing too interesting. I got Ogre, the Ogre video game, last night to lock. I couldn't complete a scenario because the uh, Combine would not move across the lake, and mm -hmm. I didn't have the forces to chase him down, so we just sat there staring at each other for many turns. <laughs> and, and the game didn't the, it didn't have a turn time limit, mm -hmm. which the scenario should have, uh, and so we got stuck. So um, Kingdom Rush and uh raft with my daughter which is a lot of fun i enjoy it because it's middle age fishing time yeah <laughs> sounds, sounds so, lovely. all right well let's let's move on yeah we should get we should get into it um yeah so so today yeah, so, we, uh, yeah go ahead Petter. yeah 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 so yeah today we're gonna talk uh about root we'll skip uh, do you want to talk a little bit about the other projects or do you want to move on um I think we should kind of get to, I don't know. I wouldn't mind talking a little about the, uh, let's get right to root. We, we shouldn't people here for root. I'll talk about a little, we'll talk about other projects at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Talking? Yeah. We'll talk about other projects at the end. So if okay, you want, if right, you want to hear about, about, uh, dope future stuff that, that that's coming, we'll do root first. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I had a question at the top of it, which was, uh, what's the progress in the warlord? And I think, you know, you could, we could, we're both equipped to answer that. Do you want yeah. to talk about the warlords? A little I bit? can talk about the warlord a little bit. So the warlord is in, um, so, okay, we are I saw, zooming out a second. A lot of the, the materials right now are being handed off from the design stage to the development stage. It's never that clean, right? You know, you, I, I don't want to draw the line at what t is design and what's development, but in mm -hmm. terms of the like staff, it means that it's like moving from Patrick's desk to the desk, uh, the desks of Josh and Nick. And the Warlord has been so stable. Um, right now, there's a lot of futzing around with the victory points, um, some theming and adjusting of the different uh, names, but mostly like the Warlord that we showed you guys a couple weeks ago is 
still warlording around, uh, very much in like a cool development stage where it's just about getting the plays in and really just seeing it different yeah. combinations and things like that. And getting the two player games in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. That's yeah. Now that's yeah. But that's it's been very stable. Uh, we did we experimented around the names of the moods this morning, uh, just because I think they all kind of needed to fit the same part of the language, mm -hmm. um, and and kind of describe the like the sort of charismatic slash manipulative behavior that he exhibits to uh, or he or she exhibits to rally their troops. Cool. Uh, yeah. So that's that. And then uh, you want to talk about the. Um, do you want to talk about the the badges? You know, it's yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll comment. The warlord is a parable for the plague. It's actually it started with a faction that spreads fire. I had it on BGG as a fan faction, mm -hmm. uh, and now it's and now it still spreads fire, but the, like the fire was kind of its warriors previously, and now it's now it's mm -hmm. all now it's all uh, its warriors again. So. All right, let's talk about the Badgers. So the Badgers are still very much in like a hot phase of design development. They've been mm -hmm. uh, iter iterating a lot. Uh, Patrick and Josh have been working on these iterations uh, lately and have, have pushed uh, just, uh, even from sharing them very recently, they've changed a couple times and we're trying to find like the exact right beat. I played a game with them this morning with Josh, a two-player Badger Warlord game, which is a very important combination that we really want to work well. And it was the best game of the Badgers I've played so far. So I'm really happy with them, uh, but they are changing. Um, and so I think I would imagine they're going to cool down pretty soon. And what we'll do, um, so the way we're going to do the print and plays for the Kickstarter is we, we released to, to, our, to the Leader Games Discord, the Woodland Warriors, we released uh, like provisional print and plays that kind of anybody on TTS could use. What will happen during the Kickstarter is we'll make a nicer print and play kit which will have a, another level of polish on it. And we'll probably release it in two batches, one batch that has the two major factions and then another batch that has kind of a lot, some of the other stuff. Uh, and so w when we do launch, the Warlords will be, will be there and, and folks will see some big changes for how they play. Um, they're very good. They, they're, they're feeling... Um, the comment I gave to Josh after we played this morning was that they are sitting uh they're much better situated within like the thematics of of root right now where they're co interacting with all the systems in ways that are how the other factions interact so it feels like everyone's speaking the same kind of thematic language right the, the, mm -hmm. and this is a really important thing about root um because you can do there are a couple of different ways of doing asymmetric design but what you don't want to do is have like a situation where a card means like a pile of gold to one player and like a missile to a, another player. And yeah. so like in root, like the cards are the creatures that live in the woods. And so how your faction interacts with the cards is how that faction would interact with like the denizens of that area. Um, and so as long as that stays stable, you could have the, the designs be really, really a, 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 a you can, they can be very asymmetric, but in a way that feels like natural to the design. And that's true of a lot of the, the design in Vast too, right? Like webs slow you down if you're playing TMM. Sure. Um, and so I think what, what I loved about the, the, this kind of the Badgers is they were like very dialed into the thematic logic of the game. Yes. Sorry. You're Back good. Door, thumped shut. I have a plumber at my house too, so I have this added tension. Of uh, <laughs> looking out the window and watching come and go, um, yeah, yeah. I'm so and like, it's it's been strange because from my perspective, the warlord has changed, has like been very small, like evening out some adjustments while in development, and the badger has been interesting to watch because we had to like explore like how does this roll score points, and then we went to like. Um, um, we went to like uh, uh, how, do, how do you score points, and then we and then we found a way to score points, and then that shaped reshaped a lot of the design, and that's been the challenge I think, especially with your you know you asked me to design militant factions because I have a, a, a insurgent faction I could be working on right now, and but with the with the the is it coin is that is that the right yeah yeah yeah, right? yeah, yeah coin faction, um, like we were running out of. There are only so many ways you can say control the map, you know. Yeah. And so, yeah, yeah. like, yeah, so we're exactly kind of running it. out. Of, we're kind of running out of language space there, 
Um, but man, do I love, uh, I like how this is shaping up and I'm, I'm really enjoying um, watching them form. I haven't got to play the latest version because uh, Josh on his day off went crazy and redesigned them again. Uh, and I think, but I think they landed pretty well. Yeah. Can you comment on that? Oh, can I comment on the fact that Josh was designing on his no, day no. off? No, no, can you comment on how they've landed? <laughs> oh, the they, they've landed so well. I mean, this is always yeah. like, there's a funny tension here because we, we try really hard to maintain like very healthy life and work balances. At the yeah. same time, we work in a field where sometimes the spirit moves you and yeah. like, you know, you're going to, if you work three hours one night, it might be like a week of work. And so you have to just be careful to take off the days when you can and make up for that. But they landed really, really, really well. Um, I think Josh was, conf con as a developer, Josh was confronted with a bunch of very tricky development questions, which he's answered uh, very neatly. Uh, and so I, I'm really excited for folks to see him. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm just paying attention to the, uh, to the comments here. Uh, uh, root ball. So, all right. So let's move on then. Um, so tell me a little bit about like, so we, we met and we said, you said, Patrick, let's make this fact, let's make this expansion. Let's try and keep it to two factions. Let's, we don't need a, you know, maybe there could be a map. Maybe there won't be, um, uh, definitely not a full board, right? That was that was off the table pretty early. Yeah. Um, but but what what was like the like? You then wanted to work on kind of a way like to 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 build a better two player three player experience, and one of the ways to do it, uh, almost a conspiracy esque, right? Like the yeah the, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah the, the old Bradley, board yeah. game, or, or I mean, frankly, you know, we played we played a, a prototype that I had uh, roving um, loyalties this summer. Mm -hmm. um so what what a, what was it about like the two-player experience that you made you want to work on the minor factions well like one of the things i mean and i think this is something that uh folks may not know about our process but it's like worth noting is that when we're thinking about an expansion like when we're blocking calendars we know like hey we need to have a root expansion so like this was just route four on our calendars in a very like hand wavy, like, Oh, and then in the fall we'll do route four and you mm -hmm. know, we'll just kind of get to it. But what, what actually was in route four was a, like a subject of a lot of discussion and things got kind of slotted in and slotted out and moved around. And, um, you know, you had shown me some notes for factions and I think you and I had both like taken a survey of the landscape and been, and come to the conclusion that like we want more factions that are that are militant, more factions that are that are bruisers that work mm -hmm. at low player counts, because if we're trying to think about like the reach roster, if you go back to that little reach chart in your rule book, we want to flesh that out a little bit. Um, but by fleshing it out, it doesn't mean that there should be a completely even spread of factions. It needs to be a little top heavy because we, we want just more possibilities for ways to play root. So that was like one thing. Um, yeah. and, and, and you were very much taking the lead with all that stuff. And as we were thinking about what we could put in the expansion, um, mm -hmm. I initially just had one thing that I wanted to put in the expansion, which was the setup cards. Right. Um, and I wanted to put the setup cards in the, the expansion because we had watched a lot of competitive route and, uh, we, we saw people do the, 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 the one plus draft or the plus one draft rather. And, I started thinking like, you know, the, the, the plus one draft is pretty good, but it's, it's only so good because it's sitting on top of the rules. Like you have all the general rules of the game and then you have this like draft that got bolted into it. Right. And the, the setup rules of Root, uh, because we didn't know we were going to be expanding it so much, uh, the, the setup rules aren't really built for like endless expansion. I mean, it, so I always, uh, I think I've, I don't know if I've mentioned this in a stream before. There's 26 letters in the alphabet. Yeah, so we've got plenty of, plenty of space. I don't know if I've mentioned this in a stream uh, with you, Patrick, before. We've certainly talked about it. Um, where there are kind of different ways that you can grow a game, right? So like you can do Cosmic Encounter, where when you buy a copy of an expansion for Cosmic Encounter, I don't even know the names of the expansions to Cosmic Encounter because I buy it, I take all the material, and I just shove it in my big box. Right, right, right. And w there's also like the memoir style or Command and Color style expansion where like this is my Russian box. It holds mm -hmm. all of the Russian stuff in it. 
And Root kind of went the command and colors way, where it said, hey, mm-hmm. everybody's going to have their own little box. Uh, but when it comes to playing a game like Command and Colors, you have this problem where you have to really select what you want to play before you even start playing it. And so, like, we're like, okay, well, I want to play with the Austrians. Well, I want to play, like, this part of the Austerlitz battle. Well, I don't know which side I want to be. There are just all these steps you have to go through to even figure out what you're playing, and then it takes a long time to set up. So mm-hmm. I started thinking, like, okay, maybe... So if I, I had a, a prerogative that was fix the setup rules to make them modular. That was like a thing that had to be done. And mm-hmm. then as I started working on that problem, I was like, oh, fixing the setup rules might actually be a place where I can insert a draft. And so I started working on a, a system that basically folded setup into the draft directly. Where mm-hmm. And, and I'll, I'll show everybody how it works uh, later in the stream. But basically the way it works is you like, when you're drafting your factions, you instantly set them up. And then that forced me to like look at all the different setup rules for all the different factions and say, like, oh, uh, this whole corner system that we were using, all these other little rules, they just kind of don't expand infinitely. Like, there are only four corners. We obviously have more than four factions that can be started in corners now. Um, so all of that kind of kept growing and growing and growing. And that then uh, tipped off, like the problem of root at a lower player count. And so like one little idea what was leading to another and we started thinking like, okay, well, what if we could do something to make root look different at a lower player count and play a lot better with two? Mm-hmm. And then it was from working on that and thinking about war games and thinking about a lot of the like, conspiracy and all the shared alliance games that we've played where the minor faction kind of emerged out of that. And basically, these three concepts, the like new setup system, the draft, and the minor factions, they all had to work together so tightly that it was like really hard for me to like say, like, okay, you work on half the minor factions, I'll work on the other half, or something like that. Mm-hmm. Because they were like a single unit of, of rules kind of floating around. Um, I think that, I, I, I don't know, I might have uh, been a little. <laughs> A little rambly in that answer, but hopefully folks get a sense. No, uh, I, well, I mean, the it's, it, it. It's the, it is the meat of it. So what are the, I think people are asking, what are the minor factions? Can oh, we yeah. talk about that? Well, let's, yeah. let's take a look at them. So here, I'm going to change our yeah. scene and go to TTS here. Uh, okay, so we're going to put a, a map on. We'll use the uh, winner. I'll, I'll comment to, uh, the, one of my favorite parts about the criticism we've received so far about working on expansion is, like someone said, that's not a very long timeline to work on expansion. And I was like, you got to understand we have the like the art ask for this expansion not as much not as much and then we have we have three full time people that can throw like creative time yep. in addition to nick uh, that can throw time into this uh, into this project i mean basically i'm almost full time because i'm almost completely out of ops cole has some managerial duty as far as like creative direction but it's not like it's not like he has you know it's not like tons i mean that is just an extension of his work on this project. And then uh, Josh Usley, I mean, this is he he is serving as my developer for the, for the factions, right. so we can. Uh, and and frankly, the warlord landed pretty much on it. Pretty team. much, like yeah, it did, yeah, yeah. We didn't change it much. So yeah. uh, I think from the third game on, we knew that's what it, that's that was the shape it was going to be. And and you know, like Josh is going to be joined by Nick, like pretty much now, to to, to fill yeah. it out. So yep. you know, they're going to be working really closely on this. If I think about the amount of labor and testing that's going to go into this expansion, it will be a little bit more than Underworld got. Mm-hmm. Um, but Underworld and this got like almost as much as Root. Uh, but mm-hmm. it, it, they were completed faster because we had just a lot more resources. We've also gotten a lot better at building these kinds of games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I uh, mean, the, and the Warlord too, you know, I mean, it's not like I just guessed one weekend and had a good, you know... I, there were notes for it. I'd been working on it somewhat, and then it just kind of percolated up and said, "This is this is the form we'll take." And here we go. Yep. Anyway, let's talk about the okay. minor factions. Let's talk about the minor factions. Mm-hmm. So, um, now what we're going to do? Someone asked if we're going to release these on TTS in any way. What we will do is I will be sharing these with the uh, Woodland Warriors either late today or probably tomorrow morning. Th- there are some edits that I need to make to the setup cards because of a of a weird typo that I don't know if I'm going to be able to do today because. There's this whole Kickstarter thing that we're trying to get ready, and it's kind of taken up a bunch of time. But uh, they will be on the Woodland Warriors, and people can join the Woodland Warriors. I'm sure somebody will be kind enough to drop a link in the channel uh, or in the Twitch chat. 
Uh, and so for folks who want to play with the setup or with the minor factions, you can within, you know, within a day or so of this, of this stream. Um, and uh, without any further ado, when you get them, they will be an object, which you just, oh, I think I just shuffled it. That eh, doesn't matter. Um, which you will just drop in here with your saved objects. Anyway, I don't need to give you a TTS tutorial. Uh, so here's how the minor factions work. Uh, let me get them out. Nope. There we are. All right, so there are a number of minor factions. How many minor factions? I'm not going to tell you. Not yet. Um, this is not all of them, though. Uh, the minor factions have, uh, the first thing you, need, you should note about them is that they are coded to a player color. So this is the Eerie minor faction. Now, one of the nice things about this is when you're designing in Root, or like, I'll, for the example, in the Exiles and Partisans deck, when I was working on the Exiles and Partisans deck, one of the themes of that deck was find a way to use a power in the EP, ENP deck to mirror a faction power, right? So like the, the Tunnels card in the Exiles and Partisans deck mirrors the Tunnels ability of the Duchy. But certain powers were sacrosanct. We couldn't touch them. Uh, and we couldn't touch them because they would create weird gameplay problems. So a classic example is the Eerie are lords of the forest, so you rule any clearings where you are tied in presence. Now, I can't put that power on a card because then if that card is in the game with the Eerie, you're in trouble and you don't know which, which, which rule supersedes the other one. And I don't want to write a rule or have Josh write a rule that says like, okay, refer to this is the, the supreme rule and this is a sub rule. None of that. So uh, every one of these minor factions is patterned on a major faction. So here we have the Eerie one. Now, uh, you'll note that they have a power. You rule tide clearings. Here, I'll turn off my overlay. You don't need that. Um, so you rule tide clearings. And uh, at the start of your turn, you score one victory point for every three clearings you rule, which is just a general power that they have. Now, every minor faction has two, has two sides. They have a demoted side with the D in the corner, and then they have a full side. Here it is, the last dynasty. Now, the way the last dynasty works is, and I'll, I'll take folks through them, this is a more powerful side of this card that you're going to use in games with lower player count. Uh, so the way it works when you're playing with the minor factions is you, uh, if you're playing with a two-player game, you draw three minor factions uh, at the start before you draft. And if these minor factions are in, uh, the Eerie, the Woodland Alliance, and the Moles, who are their paired uh, factions, cannot be in the draft. So you, you, they get pulled from the draft before you start the draft. Then, if you're playing with uh, two players, you use all three. If you're playing with three players, you flip one of them to its demoted side. If you're playing with four or more players, you flip two of them to their demoted side. Now, the golden rule for the demoted sides is that they don't have any pieces associated with them. So they're not like on the board clogging everything up. So, for instance, I explained this kind of backwards. Um, you know, I hadn't seen Rabbit Hood before. I'm, I am delight. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, I think that, that is a little, that's a little Kyle, little uh -huh. Kyle name. Um, by the way, all these names are provisional. Don't, yeah, yeah. Don't, don't at me about these names. Um, so the demoted side of the Eerie is a power that allows you to rule clearings of tide. And at the start of your turn, you score some victory points if you control board presence. So you borrow a little bit from their victory condition. Now, the other side has a bunch of text, which is very scary. Not only is there text, but let me, I'll talk about those later. Uh, come on. Except Rabbit Hood, which is perfect. Yeah, except Rabbit Hood, which, of course, will not change. So you'll know on the other side, we have. I do like paramedics, too. The, the feline physicians. Is good. Um, so here we have, um, they're going to have their own pieces. And basically, uh, if you see a tree, it means it's a global power. It's always in effect. Uh, this little sun with the arrows is a once per daylight. So once per daylight, if there are no warriors on the map, place five warriors on any edge clearing that is not a corner. So like, boom. And then if, uh, and then you get to battle once in that clearing. And then if you uh, don't rule at the start, uh, like when you use them next, if you don't rule, these guys are going to battle twice. If you do rule, they get to move somewhere and battle once. So basically, it's this roving little army of Eerie that is going to travel around the map messing up stuff. 
and that's on there on that side. Uh, and all of the like undemoted sides have kind of similar like size and scope. So for example, here's the cat one, the forest patrol, which has the power of hospitals, a, a similar version of hospitals. And with the forest patrol, uh, they start on the game. I think this one is the forest patrol. Nope. When they die off, they just you just spawn five new ones when they're all gone. Yep. I'm trying to find these dang cats. Five seems really powerful, Cole. Have you? <laughs> I have probably. Have you well, tested that? <laughs> um, let me get these cute cats. Okay, so the forest patrol starts with a, a cat in every clearing, just one. And when we'll talk it, about control in a bit. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Correct. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Um, so the way the way the forest patrol works is they're going to start with a cat in every clearing, like this, and mm -hmm. then when the when their cats die. Uh, when, as a defender in battle, whenever a patrol warrior is removed, move one of the removed warriors to this card instead of it, of it being removed. Um, now, whenever one of their warriors uh, gets put there, basically the way it works is on their turn when you're using them, you can battle with the cat patrol or you can put all the warriors who are on the card on any clearing on the board. Uh, now, what this will do is when you're playing a two-player game, is if the forest patrol's in the game, the board is going to be instantly full of all these these big these big boy cats, which means they'll there will be like that sense of a marquee player in the game. The board will have like that kind of like fill to it. Um, and then if, if you're playing a high player count game and you can't use the low player count, you get the feline physicians, which uh, will give the controlling player the power of hospitals. Okay, now I've been talking a lot about control, and I should explain how control works. So the way it works is... What is an influence die? What is an influence die? Ooh. <laughs> Here we go. So at the, the last. at the end of your turn, at the end of your turn, you will be holding on to either one or two influence dies. Now, the way the influence die works is like this. When you roll it, you'll roll it at the end of your turn, and then you'll resolve any of the influence on it. And then to mark the end of your turn, you pass this to the next player. Uh, now... How does this dice work? So, uh, for every circle, you get one influence point to spend. Some of the circles have values on them, and what that value means is that you only get those circles if the difference between your victory points and the person who has the most victory points in the game is at least this amount, is five or more. So if, I, if someone is beating me by five points and I roll this die, I get three influence. Right there. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, the players who are behind are going to have more control over influence. Now, uh, when you are playing with two players, you roll two dice every turn. So snake eyes, I get two influence. Uh, when you're playing with three players, you roll two dice, and you only use the one that would give you more influence. So like, let's say I was behind by 10 points, and so that allows me to get three influence from this die on the right, the right and two influence from the stand on the left. If I'm playing with three players, I only use the one that gives me more influence. And then if you're playing with four or more players, you just roll the single die. All right, now what do you spend influence on? Can there be a blue shell power? <laughs> this is the most, the most blue shell. Uh, can there be an explicit blue shell power? Yes. We'd have to talk to Mario's lawyers. We're, we're talking about turtles again. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, we right. can't. I mean, that was, that, 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 that's my headcanon reason why we're not doing turtles. Um, it's just, we called him Koopas as a joke, and the lawyers showed up. And then the lawyers, uh, lawyers are here. Uh, okay, so what do you spend your, um, your, your influence on? Well, the way it works is every influence is spent to shift the status of one of these minor factions. So you can spend one influence point to put it in your play area, and then you could spend another influence point to take any faction in your play area and uh, secure it. Oops, here, I get that out of here. Uh, and, and to secure it. You can also spend an influence. Let's say I'm playing against a player over here. This is some, this is Patrick's seat over here. I can mm -hmm. spend an influence point to take one of I his factions agree. into my area. Or if he had secured this faction, let's say it's secured back here, I could spend an influence point to unsecure it. So, uh, these minor factions can never be more protected than two shifts. So if Patrick has the feline physician secured and I get two influence, I can unsecure and then take it into my own area. 
So they're going to move around a little bit. They'll usually settle with the player who's in last place. And in the two-player game, this means that the player who's losing a lot will have basically all of them. And then as it gets close, they'll start losing control over them. And so uh, there are kind of like a number of different archetypes in the two-player game. There's an archetype that is um, the underdog, where it's you and a bunch of little minor factions fighting against someone who's ahead of you maybe by five or ten points. And then there's another archetype where the minor factions are more uh, tightly uh, wound up. And, you know, maybe we've been very close the entire game and we both, like, each have one or two until the very end. Yeah, the last time we played, I, like, felt... I was probably, like, eight points behind, maybe? What do you think? Yeah, 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 something like that. And then I, and then I like, went through elaborate steps to get you to collapse because you were playing the birds. And I caught up during that midturn, and then yeah, just eked out. I think you ended up at like twenty eight. Like yeah, just, yeah, it was very, it was very. You close. just stalled out, and I was like pushed right past you with some buildings. It was fun. Uh, so, so somebody asked about the bots. Uh, one thing I'll say is like these don't necessarily replace the bots. The bots give a very different experience. Bots feel like you are sitting down and playing a game with four players. Like they really do simulate the feeling of like a chaos agent or like a full player sitting at the table. These make the game into more of a war game. They feel like it's very direct. It's very uh, tactical. Um, I was playing with someone this weekend and they were like, they got a very big Twilight Struggle vibe from the whole thing where they had like, they felt like they were fighting all these little proxy wars. Um, So they they have, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. And and, and like kind of what was driving Cole behind the design of all of them that I really like is that they all kind of cost your, your, if you think about your action economy, Mm -hmm. uh, they all cost these actions to like deal with, or you just can't deal with them. Yeah. And I, it's, 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 it really rad. If you're the player that's getting, seeing a lot of them being placed on the board, it, it really is, it drives, it's great. It just drives the game the mid game a lot. Uh, it's a lot of fun to play against. Because you have, I mean, when I was playing w- with Josh, I was uh, playing his new cut of the Badgers and doing a pretty bad job of it. And he just, he like, not, I, w- I exposed myself one turn and he like knocked me out. And mm-hmm. in a two player, two player route works, but the problem is if a player gets a KO on turn three, the game's over. And mm-hmm. like, you should just set up another round. Uh, but what the minor factions did is suddenly I was like, okay, I have all these minor factions. So while I rebuild, Josh has to worry about an invasion from the north. He has to worry about things happening on the south. There are these weird lizard prophets who are converting his troops. Like, he has got a full menu just trying to get to the finish line. Now, what I will say is that minor factions, they do increase the length of the game by about a single turn. Uh, Mm -hmm. It varies on player count and minor faction mix and faction mix and all that stuff. They make a game a little longer, but um, I I tend to think of that as a good thing because it allows you to get access to the the late game. Uh, In terms of complexity, they're not super hard. I mean, uh, obviously, like, this text hasn't been overly edited yet, but, like, my first pass on them was, was like, probably a tarot card size, because I tried a des- minor faction design also, and this is so much easier. So good. Thanks. Mm-hmm. Um, and, 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 you know, and like, even this uprising, die, like, this hasn't really been edited, but, like, these guys are really, really simple. Um, you know, the, the cats that were moving around, like, if you know the field hospital power, you know this power. Um, mm-hmm. So the, the, they're pretty straightforward. Um, the one that we, one of the ones we've been working on that people have been asking us about is the bear, which is a little text heavy. Uh, and this isn't quite the final text of the bear, but basically the bear has some items on it and then a cool meeple that lives in the woods. Mm-hmm. And the way it works is the bear can use one, whoops, can use I'm trying what? to TTS control your, your screen. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, so I can zoom in on the bear. Uh, mm-hmm. The way the bear works is you can use one sword to move him from forest to forest, and you can use two swords to battle. And then when he takes hits, every hit exhausts an item, or if all of his items are full, it eliminates items. So he'll get weaker over the game. However, um, players can uh, trade their items with him, and they can turn their crafted items into cards. By just trading with with the bear. So players can like pump him up and and bring him down. Um, And one of the nice things about these minor factions is it's like allowing us to like make the crafted items really important in games that don't have the Vagabond or the Warlord. Uh, The thief side of the Vagabond allows you to steal from other players and it allows you to steal the ruins. 
or steal the item from the ruins, which means that the ruins like suddenly matter in all these games. Um, okay, so that's you know just some of their some of the design space associated with them. Uh, these are really really fun uh, designs to work on because they are allowing me to like riff on. They're like doing covers. Like it allows me like there is something established. I know what the Woodland Alliance is like, and then mm-hmm. I get to play with it in like a lower stakes. Uh, place and on on the product side, uh, one thing that, that we're doing, as you can see from these meeples, is like these are the meeples associated with the uh, warm sun prophets, uh, but they aren't exactly lizard meeples. And the reason why is that you will keep all of your minor faction stuff together, so that mm-hmm. you don't have to like if you play with the minor factions, you don't need to dig up through your box and like find your. Um, your, your lizard meeples and take them out. And then in the later game, you're wondering why you don't have the right count of lizard meeples. Oh, I forgot I put them with the minor factions. Like they have their own pieces. Now, uh, there's, a, there's a usability reason for that, right? Which I just described. But there's also uh, an aesthetic reason, which is uh, the, we have all these colors we can't use in root anymore because factions have taken them up. But now we give them their own pieces. And we, we, with the minor factions, we can revisit the color yellow in, in the game of Root. And w- we get to make a lot more meeples. And it gives that... What, one of the things that is uh, that I really like about how the, this concept has turned out is that it gives those small games of Root the color of like a really big game. Um, mm-hmm. as, just in terms of like a lot of fun characters and things like mm-hmm. that. Um, Agreed. Yeah, I, I, that's that's. I think that would like no matter what, no matter what approach we took, I think that was the like that right there is the you know, what what we wanted to achieve, and and, and it hits it really well. So, uh, so last thing I want to talk about is a very special minor faction, which is the this minor faction right here. Um, mm-hmm. It doesn't have a special name yet. So uh, it exists in two ways. So the first one is the initiative card, which uh, behaves like a minor faction except you need three to take it. You need three influence to take the initiative card. Now, what does the initiative do? Well, one player is going to have the start player card, and uh, when uh, one player is going to have the start player card and the initiative card. The initiative card can't be locked. Um, if another player takes the initiative card, at the end of their turn, they will take the start player card and then take a second turn right then which allows you to like play with the tempo of the game. Uh, it's hard to take. You have to be pretty behind, but it basically means the people who are behind are going to get like doubled turns. Um, I will uh, show my cards right now. This mechanism, expressly stolen. For, well, not exactly this mechanism, but very much a taken from Undaunted, which Nick Brockman and I have been, played a lot of over the summer. And I just <laughs> loved how doubled turns worked in Undaunted. And so this, and it was just, they added something really special to the two-player experience. And so the initiative is there. Now, I ran into a funny problem, which is I wanted the initiative to be in all player count games. But when we started testing, especially when we went to external testing, uh, playtesters said that like having the start player in a six-player game, and then suddenly someone gets a doubled turn, means that now there are, f- you know, a five or 11 even activations that are happening in between your two turns. And it's just too simply chaotic. So uh, the tempo card, maybe that's what it should be called, a tempo card. The tempo card used for more than two players is the treaty. Now, the treaty uh, requires two to shift. Uh, and the way it works is you place it in between two players. You know, So if you have, here, we'll use meeples for an example. So we got a lizard player and we have a mole player. And we have a cat player sitting. Here they are sitting playing a game of root. If I take the treaty, I can put it between any two players. And what the treaty does is, oops, let me uh, center this for you all. Uh, when this card is taken, you put it between two players sitting next to each other. They do not treat each other as enemies, which means you can stop two players from fighting. Now, this essentially gives you a very small tempo control in multiplayer games because you can say like, okay, I don't want this person to be able to hit this other person so that they will then have to hit person C. Or I'm about to be really aggressive against the person to my right. I'm going to protect my left. Um, and and it, it, it just creates a lot of interesting uh, tempo micro adjustments that work pretty well in the larger, in the larger game. Um, I will say that like, you know, figuring out some of the words around like what enemy means is 
th th that is for the next stage of development. We're still working through that. Also, I know po folks are going to ask me about like the dominance game. Uh, right now, the, the dominance game has a very soft um, impact with this stuff. We haven't really started w working on it. What will probably be is if you have a dominance card, you treat yourself as being one point behind for the rest of the game. So it gives you a little bit of an influence edge, but not too much. Um, you know, things like the Vagabond coalitions and all the various, I mean, there are lots of rules to the Vagabond that will need to be tightened and readjusted and things like that. But this hopefully gives you a general sense of the space of the uh, minor faction game. Let's see here. Uh, Very cool. Um, and so let's, uh, I mean, we only got 15 more minutes and Brooke has typed a thousand questions. So do you want to talk about setup or do you want to go through questions? Oh my gosh, all these questions. Brooke. <laughs> Such a, okay, I'm going to do setup really fast. Okay. So setup is super fast. All right. um, bas fast. Basically, here's how setup works. Uh, you have a stack of red setup cards, which uh, usually correspond to the high reach factions, and you have a stack of white, uh, a stack of white setup cards. What you do is you first shuffle the red cards and you deal one. Then you shuffle all of them together and you deal uh, a number equal to the number of players. So let's say we're playing a four player game. So I go one, two, three, four. Well, this is insane, but it's, this is a thing that can happen. Right, so there we go. And when you set up, you draft from this pile. Okay, now this particular example didn't let me show you what was so cl clever about setup. So I'll just say something about the drafting phase. So the way drafts work is players will get five cards in their hand, and from those five cards um, dealt from the deck, they'll draft three. So you know kind of, like you, players start with basically an, artily, an artificially large hand, which they're going to draft down to three from as they're picking factions. Now, what you do is, let's say I'm sitting first and I want to, like, pick. Um, this is done in reverse turn order. So the player going last is, gets the first draft. Um, you pick your faction, and then you immediately perform the setup order, and the setup is listed on that card. You'll note, for the eagle-eyed people, that there are some differences in setup. So, for example, the Eerie uh, has to pick an edge clearing farthest from any other homeland clearing. Um, that could be anywhere if there's nobody on the board yet. So the Erie doesn't have to start on a corner. They could start here if they wanted. Um, and when they do start there, that starting clearing is designated as a homeland. Now, the only special rule about homelands is that a homeland is only one player's homeland during setup. So like if I pick this clearing as my homeland, no other players can pick that for their homeland. Um, now let's do the cat's setup. Now the, the, I love the cat setup. The cat chooses three clearings, each adjacent to one another to be their homeland. Now in their homeland, they put two warriors in each of those clearings, and then they put one warrior everywhere else. Now those other warriors can even go in the homelands of other players. That doesn't matter, but their three homelands each get a doubled warrior. Then they get to put their keep token in their homeland, and then they put the sawmill workshop and recruiter among your homeland clearings, one building in each. So this means, for instance, that a legal cat position, let me uh, spawn some cats here, a legal cat position might look like this. You know, the cat could say, I want to start here and here and here. And then each of these is going to get two warriors, um, and then they get one warrior everywhere else. Right. Uh, I'm going through this kind of fast, but hopefully you can get a sense of kind of how they work. Uh, this means there are just a lot, many, uh, there are tons of, of combinations about how the cats can start. And you have to ask yourself questions like, oh, in this draft, do I want to put my keep in the middle of the map? Do I want to put it kind of closer to a side? Is it better in a corner or an edge? Do I want to go with the high connectivity keep or a low connectivity keep strategy? Uh, all right, now there's one more thing, one more funny thing about setup. So I'm going to shuffle these again. So you shuffle over all of them and you start dealing. And we're playing a four player game. Two, three, let's actually say we're playing a five player game. <laughs> four, and then we get our fifth card. Now where does this fifth card go? This fifth card, you just kind of put sideways over here. And basically this card is locked 
until a red card is picked. So at the start of the game, first draft, I can pick any of these. And then let's say somebody picks that, or somebody picks the Woodland Alliance. And then the next person picks, and they pick the Duchy. As soon as a red faction is picked, any locked card gets unlocked. Now, why does this exist? Well, let's take a look at the world of the three-player game. So I draw Badgers, and then I go one card, two card, three card. This is my third and final card. Remember, I'm playing a three-player game, so I have to lock it. Now, this card can't be picked until the Badgers are picked, which means that it always guarantees that there will be one red faction in every card combination, which is enough to get the reach numbers to create a viable game. Um, hopefully that makes sense. I know it's a bit of a, a slapdash uh, explanation. Um, okay. So anyway, like, you know, following this, somebody could pick, you know, primary dra draft here based on the, the winter tournament. I'm taking Riverfolk Company first. And then someone's like, man, I, I don't know if I want to play Lizards. They're kind of scary. But I, I can't choose Woodland Alliance because they're locked. I'll pick the Badgers. The last player will then get to pick between these, these two. Um, cool. And that's pretty much it for this setup. I mean, it's all kind of like tied together. Uh, the one thing, I'll just going back to the uh, drawing of the three minor factions. Every game always has three minor factions. Remember, with the two players, none of them are demoted. With three players, you demote uh, one of them. And with four players, you demote two of them. And when you do this, after you pick your minor factions, you remove out of the drafting deck any of the matching cards. And then the next step is to draft the, you know, do the red draft, build the draft pool, and go go get those cards. Uh, so again, these will be on TTS for people in the Woodland Warriors probably within a day or so. I have the kit ready. I just need to uh, put some corrections in there. And I don't know if it's going to be done today, but it'll, it'll be done soon and you can play around with them. Um, how That's do you decide to, to demote? You demote at random. Yeah. So, Cole, is there, like, a world where, like, you could play two-player of, like, Cats versus WA with the minor factions, or is it still going to have to be militant factions scoring out? I, 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 I don't know. Probably the two players is just going to be the red factions. That's what we're developing now. But one of the one of the fun things about this is that we'll, we will get something that we know works, and then if we have time left in the development budget, we'll say, okay, like, yeah. how, how does Vagabond, Vagabond, three minor factions feel? And then you kind of, you know, see if we can blow it open a little bit. Okay. Yeah, just, you know, that'd be fun if it worked, right? Oh, yeah. It'd be, it'd like, be great if it'd it be worked. It'd be like a, a Dave and Goliath or something. So that'd be very cool. Um, boy, that was a really good explanation to everything, Cole. That's a lot you're working on. <laughs> yeah, there's It's been pretty amazing to watch, I got to say. We have, I mean, it's, it is, it's wonderful to see like such a big staff working in such a clean, in such clean concert, right? Like <laughs> so harmoniously. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we, uh, you know, Cole and I joke, but we do get, you know, like we, even we acknowledge that like, we're both very committed to this and mm -hmm. like sometimes when we're getting ready for Kickstarters, we can get a little. We got a little antsy, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, it's all good. <clears throat> it's just, it, you know, it's any job where your like heart is out on the table. Sometimes you get, you know, passions can run high and you, you, everybody cares about it so much. <laughs> There's yeah. just so much caring uh, that you can get mad at each other sometimes, but no news about the snake. I, no um, news about the snake. I have a draft of it ready. I wanted to play, but I've been waiting to get through like maybe once the campaign is going and I don't have to worry about mm -hmm. designing anymore but uh yeah nothing nothing about the snake unfortunately uh do so. you want to run through some choice questions yes, and then we can i will do talk it about the date yeah and I, well we should talk like maybe we should announce the name and the date should we do and that first and then do yeah, questions I, okay okay we're gonna so. do it first. i think right. we're i think as it is we're looking at a 90 minute stream right now that's fine we i can go okay. a little long okay so i'm gonna do this uh i don't know how this is gonna go <laughs> it's always what people want to want, want to hear me say. I'm doing it live. Uh, okay, one second. There's gonna be we're gonna have a drum roll. I gotta get everything ready. Okay, Patrick. <laughs> Watch do my you, camera bounce. <laughs> Patrick, do no, you, you want to tell people the date? No, you go for it. Okay, Root Marauder expansion will be live on Kickstarter on February 23rd. Like magic, it is now blanketing the stream. Um, thank you, Patty, for the last minute graphic assist. February 23rd, it will be a three-week campaign. Uh, we have lots of fun stuff planned. Um, 
I'm not going to go into any specifics. I'm not going to say anything about price yet or precisely what will be in what or anything like that. So don't bother asking questions about it. But know that the thing is going to be on February 23rd. Uh, it'll be a three week Kickstarter. And uh, we are so excited to show you all the stuff we've been working on. I mean, this is like, I feel like we've already shown folks a lot of what we've been working on, but this is, you're going to see it all in one place. We've got a couple of surprises uh, that we're working on too that I'm excited mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. I'm, so, I'm so excited to be back on Kickstarter. Mm -hmm, for <laughs> sure. I'm going to so, put you there. All right. Okay. Should we? Uh, yeah, let's hit some questions. Hit some questions. I got to get my windows back in order. I got all excited. I was dancing while the thing was on the screen, so you didn't see it. Uh, bup, 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 bup. How many factions do you anticipate adding in the, after this next expression? This is major factions. And I think uh, Cole has said he's got three more in him. I think I've got three. I don't know. It's it's hard to know. It's really hard to know. Um, I think one more? We'll I, I have one more. more. I have one more in me. I, I, I think, know how I want to make one more now that I've worked on this. I think too. like this doesn't feel to me like a capstone box yet. We're like not quite yeah. there, but right. it's also feeling like we're, we're over halfway done through the system. There is so much root. I mean, we also have to see like what, what y'all think about it too. But, yeah. It's all um, well, of course. It's funny. You know, when, earlier when you were talking about how like you asked me to design two militant factions and it's to me, it is like, so if you look at like fourth or fifth edition D and D, or even like World of Warcraft, like a lot of the characters are like what you call strikers, which is like characters that do damage, and they're very popular. That's you know you want to you want to hit things in it in the video game. I get it, and so like finding people to play the like, I always thought about playing militants as like well we got to find someone to tank and heal now you know like so we can go play these cool factions, and it's really easy to design the insurgent or the vagabond you know mm -hmm. like there's plenty of room there. But then it was like, well, but we need more of the, you know, we need more of the tanks to stabilize the design. And so here we are um, working, on, <laughs> working on the military factions. All right. Well, that was, that was a long answer for one question. Yeah, yeah uh, it, was, it was good. Uh, oh, actually, let me, um, sorry, I'm going to interrupt you, Patrick, for one yeah. second. Because, oh my gosh, I can't find the link. We, we should post the link that they can go it's to the kitchen. It's been, posted it. Oh, good. You can post, you can yeah, go yeah, right yeah. now. Um, yep. uh, post it again. Keep posting. <laughs> you can sign up to um, watch the. Um, uh, you can sign up to to watch the when when it launches. Uh, Minor faction meeples. We talked about that. How does the scoundrel's torch ability interfere with stone seeking? We have not gotten to that yet. It's that's a, well. Actually, it is now fixed with the new cut of the badgers. Oh, I was lobbying that the, we just release a new uh, scoundrel card where he starts fires like the warlord, but uh, Josh looked at me, gave me a dirty look when I said that. So. Uh, somebody asked I'll, about, I'll, I'll politely back off. <laughs> someone asked about oath shipping progress. Uh, we'll probably update folks in a couple weeks. It's, it's going along the line of the timeline that we had earlier announced. Things are shipping, slow right now, but you know, shipping and COVID is, interesting <laughs> it's, it is it is wild uh, it's so strange to think about like you know in some ways our work during the global pandemic has not been that disrupted but in other ways containers are now 10 times more than they used to cost so yeah 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 uh, we literally it's you know like we probably just more. spent two thousand three thousand dollars getting a container here and oath will be i think four or five containers mm -hmm. And uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, Marshall can definitely uh, fix anything I just said. But like, yeah, I mean, 20,000 now has been uh, 15,000 now has been uh, prices that we're getting. And then it, they're just flat out. We just didn't get them like, you know, in, yeah. in some cases. So, uh, but we'll talk about that down the road and update for Oath. Yeah. Uh, are we releasing the manufacturers TTS? Yes. I think yes. you said that. Will the newly announced expansion have the new map you talked about with the rats? Um, I currently don't think that map is going to be in the expansion. Uh, we tested it a little bit and like almost immediately. Uh, I've been feeling very middle-aged lately. This is a bad winter for me. And I trip right across the usability of that map. So I think um, even I, who was excited about that map, needs to go back and think about it some more. It's funny how when you're testing, sometimes there's like, you have a couple questions, like the, the questions come at you in single file. And sometimes it's like a, 
a ra- downpour. And yeah. you're like, oh, what about this? What about that? What about, oh no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I, I think I think it's good I tripped across this because there were points in the Badger's design and the faction design that I was like, oh, uh, <laughs> we gotta make this simpler for me. <laughs> and the minor faction design. Uh, any reason for the meeple change? Talked about that, right? Uh, do you like to feel designing has become easier that the entire leader team is working together? Uh oh, am I am I down or something? I can't hear you. Hey, is that better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Definitely. sorry. I just I just hit the mute button. Oh, that's good. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I can, I'll show everybody. I've got it on this little dongle, and sometimes I bump it. Um. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. I yeah the same thing. So yeah, um, tell me about the um, tell me about uh, it's, yeah we've talked about designing becoming easier. It is far easier now. It's like different. I mean, I this feels like there is a studio that can build things. Like when I think about projects now, it's like well I know we can build anything we set our mind to. How many resources are going to like how much how many people is it going to take? How much time? That kind of stuff. Um, it's such a different type of calculation. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have matching headsets. We bought them in the same shopping trip. Uh, they were twenty dollars at uh, Micro Center. <laughs> Micro Center. <laughs> um, yeah, they were they, they were good values. Everybody has one. I have two, in fact. Um, I am a... every comment, including root ball being too dominant in the opening turns. Any changes to address this? I think we've that that's been that's put to bed yeah um we showed some art from the mini factions would love to hear more about the new win conditions i don't know what anyone's talking about there we have new win conditions no no new win conditions at this time <laughs> um someone asked me about fidgeting and why but i always fidget with my hands right now i'm actually fidgeting with this is my other game that i've been thinking about lately knife tank i just want to show the cover to the stream here I've been fidgeting with this. <laughs> um, yeah, got to get those, those good, good fidgets. Uh, when will the Kickstarter be released? So, like, not the day. I'm going to take your question to be the retail release. That mm-hmm. is a great question that we don't really know the answer to. It would be awesome if we could have this in your hands by the end of the year, but it's, like, pretty early on, uh, so it's mm-hmm. hard to know. And also, who the hell knows what's going to happen in 2020? Yeah, it was, it was shipping being screwed up. Yeah. Though I will say, like, we are delightfully far along to start this kickstarter yeah. i think actually gosh i think most design will be done by the time we even launch i don't i don't see us having much left to do by then but yeah it's let me a, over commit you we are we are farther along on this project than we've been on a lot of other kickstarters yeah, yeah or, or yeah, we're right. on schedule to be farther along uh yeah. no new decks someone asked about clockwork 2 news clockwork 2 definitely happening certainly will be an add-on in the kickstarter is very close to being done um, we just haven't we haven't had a Clockwork Two stream, but it's mm-hmm. it's moving right along. All right, uh, what's here about wind condition? Have you figured out the Vagabond Warlord interaction yet? Got it. Um, oh, ooh, I think that, it's, that's I think different. It's settled. Yeah, I think it's largely yeah. settled. Yep. Yeah. Um, I I don't know what how it's different from where we landed, uh, but there seems to be enough items. It is a little bit. I think the Warlord's a little bit of check on the Vagabond. The way that the uh, lizards are a check on the WA, mm-hmm. um, but I I think it's all appropriate. Um, it's it's definitely tense to be the vagabond. I don't yeah. know. I love playing the vagabond. Yeah, it's tough. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are the actions like between the warlords' use of items? The vagabond. They're just uh, both fighting for him. I mean, there's yeah, a, yeah. I think that there, there's a yeah. The, 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 there's an interesting push and pull. They're like not. One, one of them is not the counter for the other one, but they both swim in the same pool. Um, will there be more animal plushies? Probably. Yeah. yeah, yeah uh, probably. Why are your walls so bare, Patrick? I just moved into this house. Thank you for asking. I mean, just moved. I, was, I, was, I moved my first box in here on the 23rd of December. Yeah, a perfect, uh, and a perfect I, time. And we're, still, we're still unpacking. But if, you're the, if, you, if you saw my old house, you'd realize that the walls were blank. Uh, and so, uh, we have, my wife and I love buying art. We have a ton of art. Um, you know, not, we're not talking about like, you know, original oil paintings or anything. I'm just talking, we buy a lot of prints when we go to shows. Uh, and so I have a ton. I just, um, 
I, I frankly don't have the organizational skills or time to get them into frames and hang them. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I've been looking for someone that would come and do that for me, and I will happily pay them to do it. Uh, but yes, soon, soon I'll have art, art behind me. And my uh, camera just happens to be facing the one blank wall in my office. Uh, yeah, the, yeah. The rest of them have stuff on them. Uh, do to do, do someone root t-shirts for sale. Not really. How cool is living in the twin cities? Exceptionally cool. Um, how many minor factions will be in the Marauder expansion Four, but we might do other things for the Kickstarter. Mm -hmm. we'll talk about that later. Um, will we do another deck maybe someday, but definitely not with this Kickstarter. Oh, it's such a, it's a lot of work. It's, it's a lot of testing decks are so, and it's work. a lot of art decks and maps like, are so much testing because and it's a weird kind of testing because um so much of the, especially map testing you just have to get through all the games because it's hard to anticipate the kind of problems that maps can present so you just need to play like it basically just doubles the amount of testing that you need tell us about knife tank it's awesome <laughs> it's like a, a better version of wings of war with uh knives that are like strapped to tanks i don't know it's great that's, that sounds good. <laughs> um, um, all right. Anything else? Uh, well, I mean, there's more questions. But, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, no, you, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, I mean, there's more on the list. It goes on. Oh, my um, gosh, I didn't, I didn't check Slack. This is... No, it's it's a huge list. Uh, Root Ball, uh, Clockwork Expansion. Will there be an upgrade kit for the Missing Relationship Token and Bot Expansion Narada? Yes, so the Missing Relationship Token will be in the Marauder. Mm-hmm. And the missing bot expansion errata, there will just be a new uh, bird player board in Clockwork uh, 2. Yep. So that'll be in there. Um, turn order, we've kind of touched on. Will the base game and underground expansion be available in the Pledge Manager? I think so. That, that's hard, yeah. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard to know because you have to have inventory in those countries during that timeline. And our production schedules are so long that could be it, that can be hard to plan. Well, so. and there's this other problem where like it used to be that we did all of our printing like twice a year, mm -hmm. and now like there is always something it seems to me at least that that is being mm -hmm. printed somewhere. So like mm -hmm. if you want a copy of Root, the mm -hmm. Kickstarter may not be the fastest way for you to get the copy of Root. Oh, for sure, no. Because yeah, like yeah. there's going to be a retail. It'll be out. You know, the sixth run or something will be out in retail, maybe in like a month or two. Um, but so, it's also like uh, it's also like the like for some people in some countries it is the best way to get it sure, because sure. they want to combine all their shipping. Yeah, so I don't want to I don't want to um, yeah that 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 is I don't right. want to downplay that. that yeah, yeah and, and that's just a totally like an ongoing ops conversation. We're just not sure yet. Uh, I think eleven factions, Sebastian, maybe twelve. Uh, all right, let's keep going. Oath shipping, we're not going to talk about today um, because we're still negotiating oath shipping. Yeah. There, there is, um, there's, there's not a disaster or anything. It's just, no, no, we, no, we just don't have anything to report. It's just nothing to report. Uh, so people have asked a few questions about how the influence, is it persistent? It is not. You have to spend it right away mm -hmm. or you lose yep, it. Yep. I know that one. You do not. Hold um, it. And then the, the way that like, so you shift those, it's at the end of your turn, you shift those factions around, which I kind of dubbed the midnight phase. Of yeah, the yeah, yeah. And, um, and so once you gain them, then the, those players' pieces shift over to your control. So, for instance, Cole put birds on the board and was marauding the, the table of birds, and I was able to get control of them back from him. Uh, they move. They still move to the center of the table, right? Yeah. And then they uh, move, they, no, they, they, or they, they move they, to a player. They, yeah, they go directly yeah, they, to the Yeah, so they They're would like, come to me, mm -hmm. and then suddenly I'd be the boss of those birds. <clears throat> um, okay, so then I'm, I'm, just, I'm going in the, the Twitch uh, yeah. Will older U.S. printing people get the updated VP tokens to match the EU versions? This is like kind of a weird and complicated question, uh, but I but I have actually gotten a few people who've asked me about it, so I wanted to answer it here. Yeah. What what happened was originally Root had a little VP like with the letters VP tokens, and then we we did the third printing because we ma matched it with all the international languages. We changed it to just have a little faction head on that piece. Um, so. I don't know the answer to the question. Like, if we if there's room on the counter sheet, we might add those in. Um, we might not, but that's why there is that discrepancy, um, and we'll figure it out. You know, usually adding a couple more um, squares to a piece of punch board isn't a big deal, so we should be able to do that. But but we'll see. No no promises. But I also don't want to create like 
more support questions about what are these pieces now. So Yeah, hundred percent. Just throw them away if you don't want them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um Treaty could throw the yeah. I there's a lot of questions here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh yeah, let's talk about Void Lunch a little bit. Sure. Um yeah, so uh as you as some of you know, I was working on a game last summer called Void Lich. Um uh, I don't have the time or the expertise to finish a game of its scope. I, I designed I designed myself into four corners simultaneously. Uh, so Cole is uh, working on uh, Void Lich uh, uh, with me or for me, I guess. I don't know how you want to look at that. Um, yeah, it's straight. I, I've been calling it. I have it sitting behind me in a box, and I, I just called it the December cut because it feels <laughs> like it's a it's a weird project to work on because I feel like you and I talked a lot about it and uh-huh. you like built a setting and a mission in a way that you like want space games to be different than they are now, especially in the board game space. Yeah. And then I'm kind of like using that concept and story notes and some design elements and like rebuilding a very different kind of engine. Mm-hmm. And uh, the way that I explain it, I mean, I guess I haven't really explained it to anybody, but what I'll tell folks about it is it, um, it's like a cross between root and oath in the sense that it has certain campaign elements, but the campaigns are shorter. So I like, um, I, I, uh, it oath has a never ending campaign, right? And void Mm -hmm. Lich has got like three acts. And so Mm -hmm. you, you play these little like sci-fi trilogies. And then it closes down and you can restart it or whatever. You, it can go forever. But whereas Oath, a lot of the storytelling is very gradualistic. In Void Lich, it's like very sharp edged and pulpy, which mm-hmm. is really fun to work in. And in terms of mechanical complexity, it's very much root or a little simpler. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't know. I think folks are going to like it. <laughs> then I'll be, uh, yeah. And so like he's going to work on it, get it stable. And then... Um... And then uh, uh, we'll come. Hold on one second. My plumber is talking to me by text. One second. So I'll be coming back to work on content with him, um, and uh, and we can. Um, this is really good broadcasting here. So I'll yeah. come back to work on, on content with him, and I I think I'm pretty excited about it. I think it's a really cool project. Yeah, it, it has a very different. It's like simpler than root, but also the action structure is like slightly more uh expressive and complicated so i don't it like has a bit of a card game feel to it but it's definitely mm-hmm. a board game um yeah we're, we're in a funny spot where like basically once this proof of concept is fully settled and working then patrick and i get to build the content and patrick gets to you know build all the story beats and do a lot of that work I- I- in the engine and i don't know I maybe, skeletons in space that's all i want there you go well and you know maybe hopefully we'll have something to show folks by like the middle of the year uh i'm really <laughs> excited i'm the fact i you know it's been lovely working on all the root minor factions but in the back of my head i know that like as soon as i turn these over to the development team i get to go back to space and that's kind of yeah. where i want to be right now so and then the um do we want to talk about my project or are we uh, uh... Ooh, i don't know patrick that's I think it's up to you. Patrick is working on an exciting project. Patrick, tell us in the Vegas. <laughs> tell us about ways. it. Ah, uh, um, all right. Uh, too saucy for Twitch. Yeah, I'm. I'm it's uh, that you got it. You nailed it. No, I um. Oh yeah, we can talk about Fort expansion, right? Oh like, yeah, maybe we should talk about the expansion that was that was low key finished last week. Yeah, we sent uh, it to the printer. We uh, sent it to the printer. It's awesome. It's so good. Yeah, I'm, pretty, um, I'm very excited. About how about it. this? Let me let me do a quick Ford expansion talk, and then you can tease. And Absolutely. Then, and then we'll then we'll uh, th- then we'll bring it down. So uh, Ford expansion is excellent. Put some pets in the mix. Um, I. What is the best way to do it? If you played Ford and thought, I wish this game were like a little crazier, a little more like combo-y, a little more glory to Rome. You're gonna love this expansion. It's it's mm-hmm. very lightweight. It's a it's just gonna be you know the size of knife tank um, <laughs> over here. Glory to Rome with children. Yes, mm-hmm. and it it uh, it's very easy to integrate. And it's one of those expansions that the moment you integrate it, you're gonna say, oh well, we're not gonna take this out. This is always just gonna be the way we play for it. 
uh, it adds, it does this really cool thing uh, that I mentioned this in my designer post today. The best expansions should make all of the existing game better. And the Ford expansion does this in spades. Uh, Grant's mm-hmm. design, initial design was very good, and Nick did a fabulous job on the development. It will make you see the relationship of the different cards in the core Fort deck very differently. And it, it like keep just talking t- for a minute. Cole. Totally I different have ways to, to win. Mute you. Uh, okay, that's fine. Patrick can mute me. Um, I'm not offended, but it, it will force you to like really just. It allows you to try out strategies that would have never worked in the previous system because of how the dogs and cats work. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm not gonna. I won't say too many specifics, except that it's it's a light expansion that just injects a lot of like dynamism into the game. Um, I think it's yeah. It's gonna be uh, it's gonna be the summer, right? Yeah, it's, it's gonna be the summer. Early early summer, I think. Yeah, yeah. So my boy just came in with a uh, um, a little bit of a shiner on his forehead, so oh. I, I had to look at him. He's fine. Um. Yeah. So let's talk about havoc. Or oh god, I just said the name. Um, and that's we're working name. Working name. That's definitely a working name because it's five letters. Um, it's and it's also in use in a variety of other products. But so that's that's kind of our working name. So kind of where we started from was we've been having a lot of discussions about what we would do if we returned to Vast. Um, and sometime in December, while I was angry about something probably moving um i designed like in like two days of just solid work uh, a um essentially vast three um and it was um uh, um the uh it's uh it's it was it was like i took all the lessons i learned from crystal caverns and mysterious manner and i looked at the way that root it shaped our design and i think this is the this this great part about our relationship cole and the studio itself is that we're not designing we're not pitching designs to publishers but in fact we're, we're creating this like melange of like I, I see them as like towers in my head and there's bridges connecting them and in, in terms of like how they support each other and how like players can move back and forth between them mm-hmm. and, and learn and experience you know the other the other things and uh, Amok is great. Chaos is great. Rune is great. Um, and so, I, but we, we had a long talk about Vast 3. And, and the, what I pulled off in that weekend is I designed a game that had the same sort of tension of Crystal Caverns. That you didn't know what your opponent could do, but it was pretty easy to map out what your opponent could do. But it was all very much lighter. There wasn't the gear mm-hmm. cards, for instance, the skeletons have. But the kobolds in it did have gear. It's just it you knew what it did. You just didn't know if they had it, mm-hmm. and um, and so and so there was the. I really liked it. Of course, I can say it has half the rules. But then when Josh, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. not saying Josh makes things longer, but maybe in the process of making things readable, uh, Josh designs a game that has a similar word count to Vast Three. Um, you mute it again. Well, I, I I've been just quiet. I think. Oh, okay. I, I, I'm just, I'm just listening. I'm just listening. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Kyle actually has posted those cobalts before. They've, they were, they've been in development for a long time. And so, uh, it, it's so like what we turned to in our discussion was, how do we, how do we take the energy of Vast and move it to a system that is more like Root, where you have 400, 500 pa- words pages. Uh, you have 400, 500 words of how to move your character, how to fight with your character. And 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 we create a common place and build a new system where um, the characters, uh, like once you learn those very basic rules, this is how you get your actions. This is how you take your actions. We can build a lot of roles within those rules and have the characters interacting mm-hmm. um, in, a, in a much more stable fashion than, uh, than Vast. Uh, and then we started talking about other goals, and we so we started talking about half an hour gameplay, um, k- kind of a little bit more focused on the brawl, like the the central action of Vast, and um, and how we would like develop it so that if you you know if I assign your role, I just hand you a box and says this is all your stuff, this is what you need for this game, get started, um, you know, set up, do your setup, and. Um, and boy, and and so I've been prototyping that, and boy, I am, I am delighted with where we're at right now with it. Uh, it's it's been a lot of, um, it's been a lot of fun. 
And um, so, yeah, so that's that's what I've been working on is is a way to take the, the kind of struggle of Vast and make it work for two player very well. Uh, make the victory condition slide around and adapt to the number of players, how to make it for three players, how to keep the setting horror in as an option for one of the player positions and, and still have a very fast and clean game. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited where, where we're at right now. So. Yeah. And look, you show me some stuff today. It looked pretty cool. I, and I'll just, I'll say it for folks interested in kind of like the um, schedule. Mm hmm this is way off. This is way off. This is like, yeah. my, like, I think our hope is that maybe we show Voidlich stuff in the summer at uh -huh. some point, And then this might be like the next project coming down the pipe after that. But yeah. it, I mean, all this stuff is like very, very provisional. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, but I will be, I think this project more so for me, I will be pushing out kits as I go. Um, yeah. The way that Vass had kits um, just because it is so, it is so different than what we're doing that is one mm -hmm. um i just i just want to keep like that like i want to keep some sort of reality and like i want to keep what people able to see what's coming it check. also has like a there's a modularity to the design that really is like you can finish a little part and just kind of stick it in and then yes. folks can be playing with it and then you can work on another part yeah. um whereas like one of the things that happened and i think this is a place where unlike like vast like you could never really do that with uh or at least you could sort of do it. The problem is like you, you change one thing, you have to change like a whole stream. Right. Yeah. Things. And this, this is, this is much more common yeah. pieces. Yeah. So I, I think the best example is every role in vast has to have a way to hinder the other roles. And that created a very complex matrix of relationships. So for instance, can the dragon scratch the knight and do grit damage? Well, now every hero has to have grit. And, mm -hmm. and that is, there is just attacks to damage, which don't even do health damage. They just score you points. And then there's attacks to hinder, which which disrupt your power, like the powers you can use, and uh, and that is that's made that a much 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 clearer. Totally. Um, as far as Ahoy goes, uh, we'll talk about it down the road. It is yep. signed, mm -hmm. um, and I'm delighted to be working with Greg on that. Um, we won't be a game. Path is still out there. We're just waiting for the right time to market it. Yep. Um, I mean, it's that's still years away. I and but it's working. I've been playing it uh, solo when these uh, when I'm not in the office. And then uh, Blut is going to require a big, big change. I something fell apart for me, so I got to work on it. All right, that's how it goes. All right. Well, thanks everybody for coming along to the stream. Uh, reminder that we will be for anybody who's on the Woodland Warriors who wants to join it. We will have a little TTS object for the minor factions uh, for people who uh, want to play with it. That'll probably go live either later tonight or more likely tomorrow. And the big news, of course, you can find the root Kickstarter boom on February 23rd. Sorry, this is very bad sizing up. Uh, you can find it on February 3rd, 23rd will be on Kickstarter. If you want to be notified of our launch, please click on that link, uh, that was posted up there and, uh, yeah, just, you know, come along for the ride. Definitely follow, uh, at leader games on Twitter. If you want notifications, we will be doing, um, I don't know, every week we'll be doing a few different things. So we've got lots of content planned and we'll be taking folks through all the design and I just cannot wait to show you more about this. So thank you very much, Patrick. And I hope everybody has a lovely day. Y'all have a good day too.